video is going to be specifically geared towards people who are looking to edit and optimize images for web pages and do not have previous experience using image editing software. So I'm going to try to keep this very straightforward and easy to understand and I'm going to be covering several different topics which I will list in the description of this video. So if you have a specific question about PixLR, look down in the description and I'll put a timestamp on all the different topics that I talk about so you can go ahead and just skip forward to the specific topic you want to learn about. So with that said, let's get started. To start off, I want to talk a little bit about why I decided to do this tutorial video specifically on PixLR. There's a lot of free image editing software out there and a lot of it you have to download to your computer to use. PixLR, on the other hand, is a web-based application, so you can use it at any computer without downloading any software, which is really convenient. And the other thing that's really great about PixLR is it offers a lot of the same features that you see in the industry-leading in image editing software today, and it's free and easy to use. So, first thing you want to do is obviously go to the website here. It's pixlr.com and then it'll bring you to this page and click on launch web app under the pixlr editor. Once you get to this page pixlr gives you four different options to move forward with and uh, one of the common edits that people often need to make on images for web pages is either resizing or cropping their picture. Maybe Maybe the picture doesn't fit correctly on your web page. Maybe it's too big or maybe the proportions are wrong. So you already have this image on your computer and in order to crop or resize that you go to open image from computer and I'm gonna go ahead and open this rights free image that I downloaded earlier today from morgue file. Resizing images is very simple with PixLR. As a new user, the interface might seem a little bit intimidating, but keep in mind that most of the tools offered with PixLR won't be used for basic photo editing for the web. So in order to resize an image, you go up here to Image and select Image Size. This box displays your image's current size in pixels. Also notice this checked box here where it says Constrained Proportions. This allows you to change your image's size without changing the proportions of your image. If you do want to change the proportions of your image, this should be done through a combination of resizing and cropping. In order to change the size of your image, click in either box, the width or height, and type a new value. Generally, you don't want to increase the size of an image. I'll talk more about this later, but for now let's focus on decreasing the size of this image. Say for instance that I want this image at half its current size. In order to do that, I would select either the height or width box and type half of the current value. Notice that the height automatically changed when I typed in a new width. This is because PixLR is maintaining the current proportions of this image. In order to complete the resizing of this image, I would then press OK. For the sake of demonstration, I'm going to press cancel and talk a little bit about cropping. If you want to crop an image and you don't have any specific size in mind, you just want to crop the image so that you cut something out of the picture, you go up here to the crop tool, select the crop tool, and then make sure right here where it says constraint, it says no restriction. So this will allow you to crop the image to any size you want. And in order to do that, let's say I want to crop out this mountain down here. So in order to do that, you click and drag and select the area that you want in your photo. And then you release. And that's going to show you what you've selected and um, what, what's going to be left of the image after you crop it. So once you have the area selected that you want to crop, press enter and then it'll go ahead and crop your image and notice over here on the history this is one reason why I really like PixLR is because 
it allows you to see what you've done to your image so far and say you made a mistake, say you cropped the wrong area. You can just go back here to the first step, which was open image, click that, and it brings you right back to where you were before. So then you could go ahead and recrop if you made a mistake, if you want to do it a little bit differently. If the image that you're working with is too large to ideally fit on your web page and you have a specific size in mind for how big you want it to be after you crop it, Pixel R allows you to easily crop to a specific size. So just like before, make sure the crop tool is selected here and then go up to constraint and where it says no restriction, go to the drop down arrow to the right of that and select output size. So these boxes over here show you how big the image will be in pixels when after you crop it. So let's just say for instance that I want my image to be 800 pixels in width and 600 pixels in height. So once you have those numbers entered in the boxes just like before you click hold and drag to crop the image and notice that I can't change the proportion of this box, this cropping box. It will stay at whatever proportion you entered in the boxes up top. So once you have selected the area you like, just go ahead and release the mouse and then press enter to crop the image. Notice once again that PixelR shows over here in the history this new step that we just took to crop the image. So once again, if you made a mistake, you can easily go back. So just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to go back to the original image here and talk about making the image larger. So if you want to make your image larger than the original file size, you can do that. However, keep in mind that if you increase the the size too much it'll make the picture very blurry and not very appealing on your web page so if you do want to make the size a little bit bigger go up here to image and select image size and then you can change the size of the image right here in these boxes and this down here where it says constrained proportions this will make sure that the image doesn't morph when you change the size so if I type in 1200 pixels in width, it automatically adjusts the height so that the proportions stay the same. So then you go ahead and click OK. And now it's made the image larger. And if you want to see more of the image, you can go down here and drag the box out so that you can see the full image. So I've pulled this image box as far as I can. And you can see up here in the navigator panel, that I'm still not viewing all of the image. This red box shows you what you're seeing of the image. So if I want to see the entire image, you can go down here to this box and this shows you how big the image is on your screen in relation to how large the image actually is. So right now I'm viewing the image at 78%. I can go ahead and change that to 50% or 60% if I want to be able to see the whole image and then pull this box back over so that these panels aren't interfering with my view. So like I said before, you really don't want to increase the image size. You may be able to get away with doing it just a little bit to make it ideally fit on your web page, but you really want your images to be large enough that you don't have to increase the image size in order to make them fit on your web page. So if you find yourself having to make it quite a bit larger to fit correctly on the web page, you should probably go find a different image that's larger. The original file size is larger so that you don't have to do that. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see it in the video, but when I did increase the image size, it did make it substantially less clear and it doesn't make your images look good. I've gone back to my original image to talk about another edit that will make your photos look substantially better on your web page. So if you're using a photo that wasn't taken by a professional photographer, the lighting's probably not going to be perfect. 
it's very hard to get lighting right when you're shooting indoors if you're not in a photo studio. And when you're shooting outdoors late at night or early in the morning, sometimes the photos come out a little bit darker than you'd like them to be. So PixLR allows us to easily adjust the brightness and contrast of photos to fix this. And to do that, you go to Adjustment, and then you select Brightness and Contrast. And that'll bring up this box here. And I like to just click the box and drag it off to the side so that I can see the photo and see what I'm doing. Another thing that I like to do is I like to make sure that my screen brightness on my computer is up all the way. I find that that helps me better judge when the brightness and contrast is best for the photo. So to change the brightness, you click this slider and move it right to make it brighter, left to make it darker. Same thing with contrast. So this photo that I have was taken by a professional photographer and I think the lighting on it is pretty good as is. So I'm going to just leave my values here at zero. But once you get your values to where you like them, press OK. Another thing that I do with some photos to make them look better on web pages is I increase the color saturation just a little bit. This will make your colors more vibrant. It's not appropriate for all photos, but if you think the photo you're working with is a little bit dull, this can help improve it. So to do this, you go up here to Adjustment, and then you select Hue and Saturation. And just like with the brightness and contrast, I like to drag this box off to the side so I can see what I'm doing. So then you go down here to Saturation and slide the slider to the right. You want to make sure that you don't overdo it. If I put this up to 100, at this point it's pretty obvious that I've manipulated the color in this photo and that's not something that I want. So I like to keep it reasonable. For this photo, I think I'm going to set it here at 25. So the colors are more vibrant but it's not obvious that I've manipulated the colors in the photo. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. I've opened a new image to talk about two more tools that are commonly used for editing photos for the web. As you can see, the cat in this image has a bad case of the red eye effect. This is quite common in photos of humans and many other animals, but can easily be fixed using PixLR. In order to remove the red eye in this picture, the first thing I want to do is zoom in on the eyes. In order to do this, I'm going to use my navigator panel and click this slider here to zoom in. I can then click and drag this red box to change the part of the photo that I'm viewing. Next I want to go over here to my tool panel and select the red eye removal tool. You'll notice up here that the tolerance for the red eye removal tool is automatically set to 50. The tolerance is something that you'll have to play with, and the correct setting will be different for every picture. In order to change the tolerance, you click on this drop down arrow and move the slider. For now, I'm going to leave it at 50 and see how that works with this picture. So, in order to use the red eye removal tool, you place your cursor in the center of the red eye that you want to remove and click. As you can see, at 50% tolerance, it removed most of the red eye, so let's try the next one. Fifty percent tolerance works pretty well for this photo, but keep in mind that if you would like to try a different setting, you can go back over here to your history and click on a previous step to remove what you just did. I'm going to leave it as is for now. The final tool that I'd like to talk about is the Spot Heal tool. The Spot Heal tool can be used to remove unwanted spots or blemishes from photos. Say for instance, I want to remove this spot and this spot here underneath this cat's eyes. In order to do that, I'd go over here to the tools and select the Spot Heal tool. The Spot Heal tool works by blending nearby colors to cover up the spot that you want to remove. When you place your cursor on the image, you will see a circle that indicates the colors that will be blended to remove the spot. You want the 
circle to cover the spot as well as a little bit of the nearby color that you'd like to blend. In this case, the size is pretty good at default, which is set up here at 20. But if you'd like to change the size, you can click this down arrow and use the slider to change the size. So in order to remove this spot, I'm going to place my cursor so the spot's in the center, and then click. And as you can see, that pretty well removed the spot. Let's try the next one. The final thing that I'd like to talk about in this video is saving your photos with file names that will optimize them to be found on search engines. So in order to save a file, first thing you want to do is go up here to file and click save. This will bring up this box that says save image. So over here it shows you where the image will be saved. I have my computer selected. When naming image files, you want to separate all the words with dashes. Let's say, for instance, that I have a blog based out of Bloomington, Indiana, about removing red eye from photos. To name my file, I would start with keywords. In this case, I put red eye removal, followed by Bloomington, Indiana, and a zip code. Putting a location in your file name will help you be found on local search results. This is great for local businesses. So finally, I have blog. So the full name is Red Eye Removal, Bloomington, Indiana, followed by the zip code, and then blog. All the words are separated by dashes. Make sure your format is set to JPEG. And finally, go down here to quality and adjust the quality so that your file size is at or below 70 kilobytes. The file size can be seen right down here. So I'm gonna adjust the slider to get this image under 70 kilobytes. It'll take a minute to load as you move it. And now I'm at 66 kilobytes, which is a good file size for photos. You want to keep your file sizes under 70 kilobytes to decrease the load time of your web page. So now I click OK, and then it will show me the location where the file will be saved in my computer. I'm going to save it in my downloads. One additional step that you can take to ensure that the images from your website appear in local search results is geotagging your images. Geotagging is a method of assigning geographical metadata to your images. There are many different software programs that allow you to geotag photos. For Mac users, we suggest using Picasa. For Windows users, we suggest using Geosetter. Unlike PixLR, both of these programs must be downloaded and installed on your computer before you can use them. In order to download Picasa, go to the web address picasa.google.com and then click download. In order to download Geosetter for a Windows computer, go to the web address geosetter.de. That will bring you to this page, then click on the download tab. Then download the installation file and install the program on your computer using this link. I'm currently running Mac OS X, so I will demonstrate geotagging using Picasa. The process of geotagging images is very similar on both of these programs. If you run into any trouble, both of the websites offer help and support sections. Once you have Picasa open, navigate to the files that you would like to geotag. There are several different ways to do this. I find the easiest is to just go to File and then select Add File to Picasa. First I'm going to add the image of the cat that we edited earlier in PixLR. I will also add the image of the mountain town that we looked at earlier in PixLR. Picasa allows users to individually geotag image files or geotag numerous image files at once. To select multiple images, simply click and drag to select the images you'd like. Make sure that this red places icon is selected, and then type in the address that you would like to geotag the images with.
Once you've typed in the correct address and pressed search, this box will appear on the map. To geotag the images, simply press OK. Notice that the images that we just geotagged now have this red places icon in the bottom right hand corner of the image.